Now we'll work through an example of how to use a tree. In this case, we're going to build hailstone sequences embedded within trees. Let's remember what a hailstone sequence is. A hailstone sequence involves picking a positive integer n as the start value. If it's even, divide it by 2. If it's odd, multiply it by 3 and add 1. It's called a hailstone sequence because in this way, the subsequent numbers will either go up or down, until eventually reaching 1. So we continue this process until n is 1, and then we've built the whole sequence. Start at 5, you go to 16, according to this rule, and then you divide that by 2 to go to 8, divide it by 2 to go to 4, and then 2, and then 1, and you're done. We can also run this process backwards, and try to come up with all the different ways of reaching 1. So the only way to reach 1 is from 2, and the only way to reach 2 is from 4. And the only way to reach 4 is from 8. You can reach 8 from 16. You can reach 16 from 32, that from 64, that from 128, etc. Here's one hailstone sequence. If I pick 128 as n at the start, then I'll con go straight to 1 just by dividing by 2 over and over again. But there's another possibility. I could have started at 5. And that's another way to reach 16. 5 times 3 plus 1 is 16, just like 32 divided by 2 is 16. So here's another hailstone sequence, 5, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. And since double 5 is 10 and double 10 is 20, I could go from 20 to 10 to 5 to 16 to 8 to 4 to 2 to 1. That's a hailstone sequence that has the same length as the one that starts with 128. Eight elements in each sequence. There are other sequences that have eight elements. I could have started at three. Three tripled plus one is 10, and we already know what happens when you reach 10. You go to one via five, 16, eight, four, two, one. And in fact, there's one more hailstone sequence that has length eight, the one that starts with 21. These are all possible ends that you can use to start your hailstone sequence that result in a sequence of length 8. And we've placed them into a tree to show exactly what happens next. The tree can be constructed by running the hailstone sequence process backward. Instead of dividing by 2, we double. Instead of multiplying by 3 and adding 1, we subtract 1 to get 15 and then divide by 3 to get 5. Now the nice thing about this representation is it can tell us all the different ways to get hailstone sequences of a particular length. So the example we're going to work through is called hailstone tree, which takes a number k and a number n. It returns a tree in which the paths of the leaves to their root are all possible hailstone sequences of length k ending in n. So this tree that you see here has k equal to 8, that's the depth of this tree, and n equal to 1, the value at the top. Now you might think all hailstone sequences end in 1, and that's right, but in order to build this tree recursively, we're going to need to change that value n in our definition. Okay, now time to implement the function that generates this tree. So before we build the tree, let's redefine hailstone, which is the function that takes an n, prints out all of the different steps in the hailstone sequence, and then returns the length of that sequence. Now if n equals 1, the hailstone sequence is already complete, so we just return its length, which is 1. Otherwise, if it's the case that n is an even number, meaning n divided by 2 has a remainder of 0, then the total length is one more than the length of the hailstone sequence that starts at n divided by 2. Now if n is not even, it must be odd, and for odd numbers you triple them and add 1. Now the total length of that hailstone sequence is one more than the length of the hailstone sequence that starts at tripling n and adding 1. So here's one solution to the implementation of the hailstone function. 
that appeared in the first homework of this course. So if I start at 3, then it goes from 3 to 10 to 5 to 16 to 8, 4, 2, 1. 8 is the length. I can get the length by itself. It still does all the printing, but now length is bound to 8. Okay, this is going to be helpful for us in checking our work when we build a hailstone tree. Before I write hailstone tree, I'll write a couple of helper functions. Whether something's an integer or not can be determined by calling int on x and seeing if you get the same thing as you started with. This will be false for 0.5, but true for 3. I can tell whether something is odd by returning whether, well this is an integer, whether n divided by 2 leaves a remainder of 1. Okay, now on to implementing a hailstone tree. I implement a hailstone tree that goes up to depth k for all hailstone sequences ending at n equal to 1 in the following way. The number n is going to appear at the root of the resulting tree. Now if it's the case that k equals 1, meaning we only want paths of length 1, then there are no branches to this hailstone tree. Otherwise, we do need to construct some branches. The branches are either going to be by doubling the current value of n in order to get the number that you would reach by halving, or by adding 1 and then dividing by 3. Okay, so we can recursively call hailstone tree on n times 2. What value of k shall we provide? Well, how about one less than we had before? That will ensure that we're marching down the length of the sequence. This will have sequences of length k minus 1, and we're going to add n to the top. So eventually we'll return a tree starting with n and these branches. Now there's another branch, branches.append hailstone tree, that you get with length a minus 1, when instead of multiplying by 2, you subtract 1 and then divide by 3. This isn't quite right, but let's see what we have so far. So I can build a hailstone tree of height 3, and that will be a tree with 4 goes to 2 goes to 1, that's exactly what we wanted. But we also see some strange values in here. We expected only integers. And here we have one third, we have zero, we even have a negative one third. That doesn't look quite right. So it turns out that we only want to include this branch here if it's the case that subtracting one and dividing by three leaves us with a positive integer. So let's give that positive integer a name. What you get when you subtract 1 and then divide by 3, we'll call less. And we can replace that right here. And we want to make sure it's the case that less is positive. In fact, we want it to be greater than 1, because once you reach 1, you've reached the end of the sequence. And we want to make sure that it's an integer, because we saw that we got decimal values here, and that never exists in a hailstone sequence. Okay, let's run this again and see what we get. A hailstone tree of 3 has 4 and 2 and 1. A hailstone tree of length 4 goes 8, 4, 2, 1, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. Here, we go from 5 to 16 to 8 to 4 to 2 to 1, or from 32 to 16 to 8 to 4 to 2 to 1. We know this is always going to be an integer, but it appeared with a point zero. So we can fix that just by calling int on less. And what if we go all the way to length 8? Well, here we have a whole lot of stuff. It's hard to see what's going on. But we do see some familiar numbers, 21, 3, 5, 20. All of those appeared on the slide, too. So it looks like we're almost there. Maybe we've even reached the right answer. Well, it turns out there's a bug in this line. There are some things that we should not be including that we're still including. But in order to find out what those things are, 
we're going to have to be able to visualize what's going on in this hailstone tree because it's too hard to read it. So the first thing we're going to do is write a function that takes in a tree t and returns a list of all of its leaves. If it's the case that there are no branches of this tree, then we can just return a list containing the entry of t. Otherwise, we need to compute all of the leaves in all of the branches, leaves v for v in branches, and we need to join all those together into one long list. We saw in another lecture that that can be accomplished by summing them using a starting value that's the empty list. And we can run this program to figure out what are the leaves of a hailstone tree of sequences of length 8. Well, there are 128, 21, 20, and 3, which is exactly what we predicted, 128, 21, 20, and 3. OK, how about of length 9, 256, 42, 40, and 6 of length 10? Well, this number just keeps getting bigger, and these all look good. Length 11, oh, there are more and more starting values that can have a length 11 hailstone sequence. Are these all right? Let's call this list S. And let's see what happens when we call hailstone on every starting value in this list s. We should get a bunch of hailstone sequences that all have length 11. Well, we got length 11, length 11, length 19, length 11, length 11, length 11, length 3, and length 11 for s that looked like this. Oh, interesting. 4 is in this list. Does 4 really have a length 11 hailstone sequence? No. If I call hailstone on 4, it just goes 4 to 2 to 1, and it's done. The reason this happened is that we tried to take 4, add 1 to it to get 5, and then triple that to get 15. And that's how we made progress. But you're not allowed to make that operation to an even number. You're only allowed to do that to an odd number. So let's try again now that we've fixed our bug. If we set s equal to the leaves of a hailstone tree of 11, we see this s no longer contains the number 4. What if we try to compute the hailstone length for each value in this list? Well, we get all 11s. Now we have a correct implementation of our hailstone tree, which looks like this. A large tree containing all of the sequences where the leaves are the numbers that start a sequence of length 11. Now, what's so great about that? Well, if I wanted, I could compute what's the longest hailstone sequence where the number never goes above some threshold value. So let's write such a function. What's the longest path where all of the entries are below k within some hailstone tree t? Well, if it's the case that the entry of t is greater than or equal to k, then there is no path. So the longest path is empty. Otherwise, if it's the case that t has no branches, then the longest path we can find just contains t.entry and nothing else. We've already checked to see that t.entry is less than k. OK, a third case is that the entry is less than k and there are branches. Well, then what we need to do is find the longest path in any one of these branches and then add the entry to the front. So the paths that we get involve recursively calling uh, longest path below using that same value of k on each branch for b in t dot branches. We want to return a list that starts with t dot entry and is followed by the maximum path among all of these paths where the path is computed according to its length. So this key equals len says I want the path with the longest length. 
Let's see what we've got. If I want to get the longest path that's below the number 20 for the hailstone tree that has paths up to length 10 in it, I find that there's a sequence that starts with 12, goes to 6, goes to 3, goes to 10, goes to 5, goes to 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. All of these numbers are below 20. And what if we have a bigger hailstone sequence? Well, that's still the longest path where the numbers never go above 20. But what if we increase our threshold and say k can go all the way up to 100? Well, then we get the following very long path. It starts at 50 to 25 to 76 to 38 to 19 to 58 to 29 to 88, 44, 22, 11, 34, 17, 52, 26, 13, 40, 20, 10, 5, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1, a path of length 25.